formula, isn't it? Okay. The equation of a circle comes from the distance formula. Now let me tell you what the actual equation is, and I want you to tell me how I got there. From this to this, which is the equation of a circle. How did I get from here to here? I squared both sides. All this side was under a radical, and I squared it to simply remove the radical. But if you square one side of an equation, you got to square the other side. Okay? So if you understand that the equation of a circle is basically the distance formula, it's really not something new you have to learn. Because if you know the distance formula, you know the equation of a circle. It all comes from the same thing. This is the equation of a circle in standard form. We are going to identify the center, and we are going to identify the radius, which means how long the radius is. Then we're going to graph it. If H and K represent the center of the circle, and the equation says X minus H and Y minus k, then the center, the coordinates of the center are in there with the x and the y. But what do you have to do to the sign of it? It's the opposite sign. Just like with the parabola. When we had to switch the sign that was in the uh, parentheses, same thing here. So the center of this circle can be found at positive 4, negative 2. Positive 4, negative 2. So for this, you just switch the second? Switch them both. You switch them both. Okay. Now if the equation says it's equal to the radius squared and the number over there is 36, that is the radius after it has been squared. So what's the length of the radius? 6. <coughs> The radius itself is equal to 6. If it's not a perfect square, then you write it in radical form. You take the square root and reduce it. Okay? All right, now if we're going to graph this circle, I'm going to start with my center. And for those of you who had me in geometry last year, when you're talking about the distance of something, how does it have to meet or go with a point? Can it be like just in any direction? Or does it have to be a certain way? Put it this way. If I asked you to find the distance between the front wall and the back wall, would you start in that corner and walk to that corner to find the distance? How would you measure it? Straight across. It's perpendicular, right? Perpendicular from it. So when we're talking about our x and y axis and our radius is 6, we are going to count perfectly up and down six units above the radius and put a point, six units below the radius and put a point, six units to the right of the radius, and six units to the left of the radius. And then we're going to do our best to draw a circle through those four points. Okay? So from here, I'm going to go up six units directly above it, six 
six units directly below, directly, and graph paper will make a tremendous difference here. And six units to the left and six units to the right. And then you do your best to draw a circle through those four points. Yeah, yeah it's ugly. But on graph paper, it'll be a little bit better. Okay? It's a score. It's a score. All right. So we need to be able to identify from the equation what the center is. Remember, we switch both signs. And then the radius, we simply take the square root of that number. All right, let's do one more, and then we're going to move on to what else we need to do. To graph that circle, you would need to identify first the center, which I'm going to abbreviate CTR, and then the radius. What are the coordinates of the center? 3, 1. How long is the radius? 4. 4 units long. If you were going to graph this, you would go to 3, 1. And you'd move four units up, four units down, four units right, four units left, and draw a circle. Okay, not too hard, huh? No, perhaps. But it's going to be Yeah. You know. All right, now. What if I said, I want you to write the equation of the circle that has a diameter that starts at 5, 4 and stops at negative 2, negative 6. What do we need to write the equation of the circle? The center and the radius, right? So that means that we are going to have to find the center and the radius. All right, let's start with the center. If we know the endpoints of the diameter, how can we find the center? We'll do the points. The midpoint formula. We're going to use the midpoint formula and find out where's the middle. All right, so step one is we've got to find the center of our circle. All right, so we're going to use the midpoint formula. As a refresher, that's x plus x over 2 y plus y over 2. x plus x is 5 plus negative 2, which would be 3 over 2. y plus y is 4 minus 6, which is negative 2 over 2, or negative 1. Okay? So I know my center. Check. I've got the first part. What's the next part? The radius. Which requires me to use what? Which one? The distance formula. Now, do I use the distance formula with these two coordinates to find the radius? No. With the center... <laughs> And one of these, whichever one you want, it doesn't matter. Okay? So the next step is I'm going to find my radius. And I've got to use the distance formula. Well, as a refresher, that's x minus x squared plus y minus y squared, and the whole thing's under a radical. What happens to the x minus h and stuff? I'm not there yet. 